Hello everybody. Welcome to day 24 of Love Your Way Happy. Uh, this is our, our second last uh, live stream in the uh, in the course. Uh, so uh, yeah, I really hope that you're uh, enjoying the course so far and that you're able to really get a lot out of the, the live streams by either uh, jumping on live or, or watching them you know, when, when it's convenient for you. You know, really this is just you know, the, the beauty of, of this work is that you, know, you can come back to it at any time, uh, jump on when you, when you can. So just I'd like to see if, um, I'm not quite sure if we can do a bit of an experiment because I can see some people jumping on there but I can't see who you are, mystery people. So if you can figure out how to let me know <laughs> who you are, uh, either maybe by, by posting a comment and saying hi, uh, or yeah, um, I don't know, taking yourself off in incognito, <laughs> finding out a way. That'd be really great because then I can know who's who's on. That'd be really good. Uh, so yeah, so today we're talking about the the last few days or uh, six days since our last live stream. Uh, and so, firstly, starting with the uh, the taking effective action. And so, uh, there were two parts to that. There was a bit of an introduction and and really setting up. Uh, you know, why it takes us so long perhaps to get into the, the action. You know, I guess it was a bit of a, a question, you know, why is it that we only start to look at action, you know, when we're more than halfway through the course. Uh, and so just to be clear around that, you know, really importantly that in order to take effective action, you know, it is really important that we're setting up uh, the planning stage and going through the planning stage. Oh, g'day, excellent, thank you, now I can see you. <laughs> That's great, so hi Deanne, hi Kath and hi Jade. That's really wonderful, thank you for uh, yeah, giving me a shout out so I can, now I can see you, that's great. Uh, and so, yeah, so the taking effective action, you know, really importantly rests on uh, us being able to do a really effective planning stage. So often, you know, it's so quick to come to an idea, say, yep, I wanna make that change. But you know, so often times we'll actually make that decision to um, you know make that change, uh, you know, start taking action, and so quickly it, it falls over. Uh, and so importantly, then you know the course is really set out such that yes, we you know take some uh, time to really think about what matters to us first. You know, we you know when we first started, we look at you know, where you've been, where you've come from, and, and where you think you're heading. And so we really lay the foundation then. Uh, for moving forward effectively. Uh, and so also that this is a journey. And so most things that actually really matter take a long time or at least a significant amount of time uh, in, in order to realise. And so that idea of introducing fun and play uh, early on in the piece so that then you know we can really cast our mind towards fun and play and making sure that this is something that you know, we're not just enduring, that we're enjoying along the way. Uh, and so by way of that, I thought I'd share a little story. So um, I don't know if anybody saw that little uh, caption around uh, tonight's live stream about, you know, no time to uh, ask questions, just jump in. Because uh, that's sort of how I feel about this live stream tonight. Like I really feel like I'm sort of screeching in at the last minute because it's been really chaotic, but chaotic for a really good reason. So. Um, Quite a number of years ago, Dean and I decided that we wanted to buy a house. And uh, if anybody you know has ever bought a house in the last you know, four or five years in Darwin, you'd appreciate that you know this that was a really hard thing for us to do, and we had to make you know, quite a lot of sacrifices. Uh, and so, one of those sacrifices was uh, you know, very kind of Dean to make was uh, he sold his beautiful new car it was at the time. And uh, being a mechanic ended up just buying effectively what uh, most people would say was a shit box. <laughs> and so he's basically had this pretty, you know, a series yearly of really terrible cars. Uh, one was bright yellow with a, um, with a, with a cactus uh, on the side, used to belong to El Cheapo, it was their promo car and uh, it was it was quite ridiculous but you know he basically got it for like 500 bucks and just drove that around until it died and, and then the next car lasted a year and whatever else and then uh, one car we got given, so just after I'd had Bodie we got given this car by um, uh, my parents and they said right you know we can't get it to work and so Dean worked his magic and got it to work and it lasted. And you know, that particular car was quite ridiculous because it had um, 
a door that may or may not close for you and a window that may or may not go down. And so I was driving home from work late one night and um, there was a, a boost bus there and uh, I was just so petrified that I would not be able to either get the window down, get the door open, and if I did, would I actually be able to get the door uh, back closed again? <laughs> so, you know, this was a ridiculous vehicle and maybe not safe, but uh, anyway, we you know, soldiered on through and, you know, we eventually it got to this point where now uh, we've been able to do a bit of refinancing and pull a little bit of money out of the house in order to be able to now buy Dean a, uh, a, a reasonable car. And so the last uh, probably week or so, uh, I have been very kind of on the back burner and, and running late for Saturday's live stream because we're looking at cars and, and various things. So it's been really quite chaotic. But when I look at it, it's a really important for us because you know it's a culmination really of probably five or six years of struggling through with these ridiculous cars in order to be able to achieve something that was really big for us. Like it's it's you know very you know, some people would say the uh, you know the dream of owning your own home in Australia is that dream is dead and blah blah blah. And as much as I don't believe that, I do acknowledge that it is really tough and we've made a lot of sacrifices to make it happen. And so it's sort of symbolic this car that it's symbolic that we've nearly come full circle where we've actually now been able to get Dean a car that you know is not going to be defected on the side of the road if we happen to get pulled over or, or whatever it is which you know pretty much all of them were a bit like that uh, and so yeah so I guess it's a, it's a bit of a celebration for us uh, so we've been able to now come full circle and buy Dean a, a reasonable car and as much as it's not about the car it's, it's my, well, part of it is because obviously that's a safety issue, but a big part of it is that, that acknowledgement that, hey, this is really something big that we've sacrificed and worked towards and, you know, that it's it's now come to a, a sort of, not a closure because obviously this is a journey, but it is, it's 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 a, a point along the way for us to actually stop and celebrate and go, yeah, you know, this is something that we've worked really hard towards and we can celebrate it. And so I guess that wouldn't have been possible or it would have been made a lot harder had we not actually put in some fun and play along the way. And so this was, you know, this is you know, probably five or six years and maybe a bit more in the making where we can actually now go, oh, breathe a sigh of relief and it feels a little bit easier. And so had we just kind of endured through that and not made it our purpose to, you know, keep that fun and play really front of mind, that puts you know fuel in the tank to keep with that analogy and uh, go and roll with that. That if we hadn't have made that decision, that would have made that probably a whole lot harder. Or you know, many many times I felt like giving up, saying it's too hard. But really, then keeping our eye on the prize, you know, our reason why we were wanting to do it. But also going, okay, well maybe we just need to you know take a bit of a break and have a little bit of fun and blow off some steam. And so being able to do that has been crucial. So. That fun and play, you know, that really was not an accident that came early on because if this is your life, we absolutely want to be enjoying it uh, along the way. And yeah, these things are important to us. But, you know, yes, it's important to have a house and yes, it's important now, you know, have a, a safe car to drive. Like, yeah, they're important, but they're not really what make life worth living as such. That if you are suffering along the journey, then there's no point, like we wouldn't have been able to celebrate and tr truly, you know, enjoy tonight had we not actually allowed ourselves to pace ourselves through this process. So it's just such an important learning, particularly with those bigger sort of life goals or those bigger uh, life purpose essentially that, you know, especially when it's in alignment with your purpose, that it's something that, you know, that's, that's your life. And so it really is important that we're factoring those sorts of things in us dealing with the setbacks like we've mentioned. Uh, and all of that then leads us up to that taking effective action. And, I, and I, I use that term very specifically. We're not talking about taking action. We're talking about taking effective action. And there is a huge difference. And you probably would just tune in to your own life where you've taken action and it really didn't go anywhere or it didn't, it did for a little while and it stopped and started and, you know, it really didn't actually uh, work out the way you'd want it. And as much as we can say, yes, that's learning, part of that learning is to come back to that planning stage and saying, well, maybe what were some of those things that I might have missed uh, and what are some of those things that I need to ensure that I'm factoring in this time around so that my action is effective. And so part one of, of those two uh, processes that I gave you 
was really then starting to really align your action with your values. Because if your if your action is in alignment with your values, you're going to be a lot happier, you know, doing those actions, uh, and it's going to actually be uh, aligned then with your meaning and purpose in your life. Uh, and so it's not just about doing things ad hoc, but it's very deliberate and very strategic that you're doing it for a purpose. And so then the questions uh, become, you know, if I was acting in alignment, and so in the example I used, freedom. So if I was acting in alignment with my value of freedom, then what would what would aligned action look like? Uh, and so if you guys haven't had a chance to have a look at that, that's okay. But you might just sort of tune in with yourself now and, and ask, you know, if you are identifying one of your core values, and in that exercise I asked you just for ease, uh, just to choose one, uh, your top value. Um, oh, hi Christine, how are you going? Uh, just to just as a little bit of a, a sidetrack, just for Christine, uh, our celebration meal. I just mentioned about a little bit of a celebration. We had uh, a mint uh, by your recommendation, and it was delicious. So thank you for the recommendation, and that is now our favourite. If you don't know mint, just a shout out to uh, uh, I'm sorry, mint leaf, mint leaf uh, in Palmerston. It's just beautiful Indian food, and so we celebrated with Indian food, uh, and it's delicious. So thanks for the rec that recommendation, and that's our celebration place from now on, uh, given that we can never eat out because we have children, so housebound. Uh, anyway, so yeah, so coming back to that aligned action. So if you were acting in alignment with your top value, uh, what would aligned action look like? And that's really, really key, uh, that we're looking at aligned action. Uh, and so that means that our, our action is more likely to feel uh, purposeful, meaningful and enjoyable too. So importantly, uh, we're ask, answering those questions and in that exercise, that first one, I asked you then to, to identify five steps. Uh, and so that's an evolution. So, you know, if you answer, okay, so what would five steps, uh, action steps be that would be in alignment with that value? Uh, then, you know, if they're, you know, uh, tick boxes type thing, then um, you would obviously want to review that, you know, either daily or weekly. So you can say actually, or, or just, you know, as you go, like, yep, I've done that. So what is, what's aligned action now? And so treating that as a bit of an evolution. So when you tune in with yourself, uh, what would aligned action be? And so that then is something that's evolving from day, day to day. And it means then that you're taking consistent action towards what I would call your true north. Um, you know, your top values really being your true north, your direction in life. And when we're choosing that, consciously and deliberately, uh, you know, obviously we're going to feel happier because we feel like we've got a meaning and purpose. Uh, and we're much more likely then to... Oh, yes, no problem, Christine. <laughs> yeah, yes, mint leaf is definitely the go. Uh, yeah, so um, and so then the next step of that uh, that part two. So we've looked at aligned action and uh, we've identified five steps. And again, you're just tuning in with yourself around that. Uh, and then we're moving on to that that uh, part two of aligned action. And that, um, you know, we're really then, and I, I really really love that process because it's just so nearly so black and white, like when you tune in with those those steps and those goals and we're saying, first step, is this for me? And that, that just cannot be overstated. When you tune in and you look at those action steps and you ask yourself honestly, is this for me? Yeah, then we can really see whether we are acting in alignment with our values or if we're acting in alignment more so with what we think we should do or what we are expecting of ourselves, or what we expect we should be valuing, if that makes sense. So we all have ideas about what we should value and what should be important to us, and then we've got secretly what we actually do really value. Um, and so we want to make that less secret. We want to put that much more out in the open and just say, well, I know I should value that, but what I actually do value is this. And so put that aside, because that will never increase your satisfaction, fulfillment, meaning, purpose in life. Um, and so that question really, you know, that's a process in itself. Is this action for you? And if it's no, then absolutely we need to rethink it. So do we, we need to either go back to look at what your values are and have you really tuned in with what's important to you? Um, or is it just the action steps? The values, the values important, 
uh, but the, uh, the the actions are maybe shoulds or, or whatever. Uh, someone's told you that you should do it or whatever. And that is just, there are so, well, gosh, is that a better term? There are so many ways to skin a cat. Uh, so uh, if you have a better saying, let me know. But, uh, you know, that there are. So if someone's told you you should you should be doing this or you need to be doing such and such, uh, you know, when I started this business, you know, so many people, oh, I should do this, should do that. It's like, well, I'm just going to do what feels right for me and what is in ease and flow for me. And I'm just going to go with that. And so there's all sorts of ways that you should, you know, build a business or you, you should be doing things. And, you know, so what? You know, that I'll, I'll do it my way, thank you, because that's what feels good for me and that's what I'll be able to commit to and that's what I know I'll follow through on. Uh, and so effective action in essence. Uh, so basically that first step, is it for you? Yeah, really, really uh, make sure that you're tuning in with that. Don't gloss over that and tune in with yourself and see if you can answer that question really honestly. And if not, then go back and revise some of the previous steps. Uh, and then the other ones, you know, are you 80% confident that you, you can do it? Uh, and so, you know, I guess that speaks to skill level. So if you're not 80% confident that you can do it, it might be a goal uh, or an action step that you need a little bit of help with. And that's okay. It doesn't mean that we do away with it. It just means that effective action is probably not at this stage going to occur um, if you, uh, you know, go and try and do that right now, you know, that it's possible that there are some steps that need to happen beforehand and that's perfectly fine. We can still keep our eye on the prize. We can still value what we do, but we can say, well, actually, yeah, it's not, I'm not quite 80% sure that I'm there yet. And so maybe there's some study that you need to do or there's some personal development that you need to focus on or there's some resources you need to draw in or, or whatever it is that, you know, that confidence level doesn't mean don't do it. It just means maybe the timing isn't right is all. Uh, and so, yeah, so that uh, step two in taking effective action really then starts to break those steps down, puts them under the microscope, and then really after you've answered all of those questions, uh, if you come up with a, a no to oh, you know, most of them, uh, then it's probably not the time for you, uh, you know, I guess if it's 50%, you know, I guess that's so you're sort of still sitting on the fence a little bit. So I guess I'd, I'd say that if you're not saying a resounding yes to pretty much all of those questions, then it's possible that your action will not be effective. And so best that you know that now before you start taking action, fall in a heap later, uh, and then go, why didn't it work? You know, at least, at least you'll know, you know, well, I was only 50% sure that I could do it anyway, and so that's probably why it didn't work. Um, not to make an excuse, but to, to, I guess, to be really, again, scientific about these things is what I'm encouraging you to be. Uh, and so when we ask those questions, we're setting ourselves up for success uh, and allowing ourselves the opportunity then to see where, at the very start, whether or not there's more work that we need to, we need to do in order to be, in, before we actually even start. Uh, and so I really, really encourage you then to look at those uh, those two, uh, before we, those two processes before you start to take action, set yourself up for success uh, and really allow yourself the opportunity to, again, take aligned action, uh, action in alignment with your values uh, and making sure that the, the action sets are ones that you can actually do. So you know, being, being kind to yourself basically. Uh, and so then moving on to the, the gratitude and joy and, you know, obviously, you know, they, those uh, modules are such a joy and a delight to actually to, to write because it's one of those things that, you know, uh, oftentimes we think that, you know, when we have all of those things that we think will make us happy. So for us, you know, to have the house, all the car and all those sorts of things, when we have those things that will make us happy, then sure, we'll have something to be grateful for. But really, you know, the evidence doesn't support that. And, and I guess if you tune into your own experience, it probably doesn't support it either. That actually it's the opposite. That people who take a, a grateful approach to life, uh, and really engage with, uh, the things that they have in their life right now, um, that they have to be grateful for, no matter how small, the beautiful sunrise, you know, that's a gift that we all have every day, should we tune, to, tune into it. Um, you know, so there's lots of things that we, you know, because we're an automatic pilot, we're not tuning into them. And so we're kind of missing out then on, on the gifts that are available to us to really start to, what I've said is turn the heat up under those things that we're wanting to cultivate. So if we look at, you know, the, the balance of happiness, 
you know, really uh, managing those states, uh, so setbacks and negativity, you know, those sorts of things that can really hold us back. Yes, we want strategies around those, but that is not enough. Uh, and you know it really is important that we're looking at you know working through those things but there's a whole other uh, side of the coin essentially that we can then start to focus on which really allow us to start to move in a direction that really will create in, uh, more fulfillment and, and satisfaction and, and genuine happiness, lasting, enduring happiness, uh, which is when we have meaning in our life and meaning and purpose and something outside of ourselves that we have to contribute to and that we are connected with, so a sense of belonging essentially. Uh, and so, yeah, so these are the states, so the gratitude and the joy that you know, those are things that can be delighted in and enjoyed now. And so if you haven't had an opportunity, um, I've done the, the, the gratitude audio, uh, which is in the lovely way, on the Lovely Way Happy page. Um, just as an aside, if you've, if you've done it, the first one that I did it, that I put on Facebook, um, I have redone it. Uh, and it's really funny because I do go back to these, um, mod, uh, these things myself and I do listen to the audios and um, oftentimes it's not quiet when I listen to them. And the other day I listened to it, the gratitude one and it was quiet and I realised I had my dog sitting on my lap when I did it and her tummy was gurgling. <laughs> And you could hear it in the audio. And I was like, oh my God, that is so hilarious. Um, and so I've redone it, you know, minus the dog. Uh, and it's so, yeah, so it's a new audio. Uh, so if you did the first one, then, then please read the new one on Love Your Way Happy. Um, and so, yeah, new rule, no dogs on my lap while I'm doing these things because it's too risky. You never know what's going to happen. Uh, and so, yeah, uh, so have a, have a go with the gratitude, uh, the gratitude audio. I'd really encourage it because that, that audio really is an invitation then for you to start to tune into those things that are happening for you now, first and foremost, those things that are happening for you now in your life that are already there uh, that you can be grateful for, which is really delightful. That's already happening now. Um, and then, but it also then looks at people in your life that have helped you. Uh, to to be where you are now, and, and so we've all had people who may uh, have been you know a part of our life or a very peripheral part who may have then decided to help us in some way, uh, and we can really then start to tune into that and see the significance of the assistance and the people that have helped us along the way, uh, and to really then tune into the gratitude that we can feel for these people, um, and then it goes on to talk about you know the gratitude that we can have towards ourselves. And so really importantly, that if you look at everything that you've been through and everything that you've done in order to get you to where you are now, you know, that's, that's significant and that is an achievement and that is something that we can really be grateful to ourselves, appreciate ourselves for having you know, gotten here to now be able to have the opportunity to do what we can do with our lives. Uh, and so, you know, really importantly, we're actually taking an opportunity to tune in and, and see if we can send a little thank you to ourselves or a big thank you, a sense of appreciation for everything that we've been through in order to get here, in order to then make the most of the opportunities that we have in our life now. Uh, and so, yeah, so that's the gratitude, uh, the gratitude audio. Uh, and then in the little video download, I did talk a little bit about uh, some of the, the new research coming out around uh, gratitude and joy. Uh, and how when we uh, tune our hearts to joy and gratitude and turn our minds to, to uh, uh, cultivating these states in our life, uh, you know, that's certainly uh, supportive of happiness. But what we find though is that when we actually share that with others, uh, and more importantly when we share that with others who are delighting then in our success or delighting in our joys uh, and who can really you know, acknowledge just how uh, important those things are in your life and can be genuinely supportive of you and, and delighting and happy for you, that that then gives them a boost uh, and gives you a boost. And so this is where, you know, we can look at emotions as, as contagious. And so, you know, we want to say, well, you know, what ones do you want to be you know, spreading around, so to speak? But also, uh, how can you be then drawing that out in others and in the video, I was really inviting you then to, to see if you could change the landscape of your relationships because, you know, oftentimes they are problem focused and, you know, oh, hey, oh, not bad, you know, typical Australian saying. But, you know, what we could potentially be doing is inviting them 
you know, for people to be sharing their positive experiences and saying and, and asking people, you know, what's what's going on in your life that's that's good, you know, what what have you really enjoyed doing of late, uh, and really inviting people then to share their joys with you. Uh, and so it's not to be dismissive of some of the hardships that people might be experiencing, but sometimes people don't even think about it. Uh, and sometimes people censor themselves, and this is an experience that, that I had recently where you know, I had a friend who was censoring a, a beautiful a moment in her life uh, because she didn't want to make me feel bad. And it's like, well, forget about that. Share, share it with me. I'm happy to hear it. But I guess oftentimes, you know, that response when you're sharing something good uh, may not be uh, may not be a positive. Uh, and so, if you could be one of those people that invites and allows people to share their positive experiences, to delight in them, and to to clap with, along with them, you know, what a, what a wonderful contribution that would be in and of itself. That that person can feel happy enough that they can share their, their successes with you and open up to you around that. Uh, that would be wonderful. And what a wonderful contribution for you too, because when you're when you're joining with someone around those emotions, you get to experience them too. So you're riding on their coattails and 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 getting you know a bit of a buzz out of that too. And that's that's you know I guess that's that's the gift in, in doing that. So yeah, so importantly, then we've got acknowledging gratitudes, uh, acknowledging joy, you know, really making that a focus, turning the heat up. Don't expect that to happen by accident because it won't. That it will happen when you decide for it to happen. When you decide to allow yourself to tune into it and to cultivate it. When you give yourself permission for good things to be okay. You know, for you to give yourself permission. You know, that self kindness. That I want to be happy. You know, I want to experience good things, and that's okay. Uh, and so that's the self kindness that we can want those things and allow those things in when they're there. Uh, and then we're, you know, seeing if we can expand that into our community where we're inviting other people to share those things with us and then maybe creating relationships which are based on sharing joy, supporting each other through hardship but also delighting in each other's successes and joys. And so just in that video, just a, a bit of an invitation there to see if you can set yourself up for a bit of a uh, an end of day strategy around you know, what do you appreciate, what are you grateful for and what were your highlights. You know, so you know, really key there that we're actually tuning into what were my highlights, and it's really funny. Uh, Dean and I do that, and you know, oftentimes, you know, we, after a busy day, I go, "What's my highlight? What was good about today?" And sometimes I have to really think about it if it's been a tough day, but it's always good because I always then tune in and go, "Yeah, well, no, that was really good," and I remember, and I go to sleep remembering what was my highlight, and I go to sleep remembering those things that I'm grateful for, uh, and so you know, again, tuning into those things. And allowing them to be front of mind as you go off to sleep, that, that's a mindset changer, really. And that's one of those habits that we can really set ourselves up towards cultivating states of happiness, uh, fulfillment, and joy. Uh, and then you know, making a difference in your community because you're sharing that and allowing other people to share it with you. Yep, so that's, uh, that's the, I guess, the course component of that for the last uh, week or so. Uh, and just one last little piece just about how people are engaging with the course. Um, I have had quite a, a bit of feedback around, you know, I guess the 30 days and how it unfolds and, and people dipping in and out as they can and when they have the time and maybe not following strictly the 30 days and all the rest of it. That is completely okay. Uh, and so I guess I, I just need to reinforce that one thing principle, which is something that is just such a, a, I guess, an easy way to engage with anything new. That, yeah, everybody has busy lives and it's, you know, completely reasonable to assume that you may not be able to put 30 days aside where you can go hammer and tongs into this. Totally fine, uh, and so that's not that you kind of you failed. There's no score at the end of this course, by the way. Um, but what I would like to reinforce is that this Love Your Way Happy course is is my free gift to you that you have access to for life. So this is not something that you're going to be locked out of. This is not something that's going to be taken away. That I'm offering this to you as my free gift, and this is this is for you. And so you engage with it at your will, at your leisure, uh, and when you need, uh, and take the pieces. And I guess what what I'd like to reinforce is that I have worked it through such that those things 
I, I see as uh, ordered and sequential. So like I say, the fun and play was deliberately put towards the beginning because engaging in anything that's going to take you a bit of time, we need to just be really looking after ourselves, absolutely. Uh, and so yes, there is a little bit of that ribbon that runs through it uh, and that they are ordered and sequenced. But if that doesn't necessarily seem to resonate or feel right for you, then obviously take what you can and what you need when you need it. And that's absolutely, this isn't a one size fits all. Uh, and so please feel free to take what you want, when you want and when you can. Uh, and that at the end of the 30 days, you won't be locked out. This is my free gift to you. And I, I really hope that you can just take what you need when you need it and then come back to it you know, when you want to revisit it and, you know, that uh, the, the course at the beginning, uh, sorry, the, the process at the beginning about re-evaluating and reassessing, uh, that's something that, you know, you can come back to it at any time and be, that would be super powerful uh, as with any of those processes though. And so, yeah, we can relax around it. It's okay. It's not going to be taken away. And however you're doing it is right for you. And my encouragement is that if you take one thing away from this course and you do that deliberately and you do that consistently, then I have confidence that your life will change, that any of these strategies that you can implement, those mindset shifts, you know, those shifts, once you've made them, they are permanent, that they're yours. And so it's not about necessarily, again, having to do it all at once, but you take on board what you can when you can. And once you make those shifts, they're permanent, they're there, and then you can build on that, and then you can build on that, and you can build on that. And so, yes, this is how we love our way happy. And so, yeah, that's the uh, the download for today. Uh, again, we have one more live stream for next week. Uh, that'll be our, our closing live stream. Um, but again, the course is going to be open to you guys. This is my free gift to you. And so no need to panic if you haven't, uh, you know, done it, done it all. It'll be here for you guys. So yeah, have a great week, everybody. And uh, we'll talk to you very soon. Bye.